So this could be to Director Dixon or Secretary Harris or both. Um, the continuous vetting in the National Background Investigation Service is not mandatory for all the agencies um, and departments to use as their system under the Counterintelligence Security Agency. And this directly I think, impacts oversight by ODNI as a security executive agent. Um, Additionally, contractors have a real tough time being able to plan and train to these very different systems. And it's not easy to track whom to contact for security clearance tracking and reciprocity. So the DCSA and NBIS systems of security clearance do not cover um, or support the IC. Why is that? And what, what is the plan going forward? In particular, what about reciprocity for employees that are moving, for example, from CIA to DIA? I will take that one, sir. The, the, you're absolutely right that DCSA does not cover the intelligence community. We have a number of agencies within our community, and we essentially allow them to determine the types of risks that they're willing to take as they're bringing on board their folks. So they don't do their own. Many of them do their own uh, investigative service. They also have enhanced, enhanced vetting processes that they include to include polygraphs, medical, um, some psychological screenings that DCSA does not provide. But those are what they believe they need to bring on board the kinds of folks that they need for their particular workforce. To expect DCA to, DCSA to do that sort of tailoring for different agencies to deliver what they need is something that we wouldn't put on them. We believe that the agencies themselves are best positioned to bring their folks on and know what kinds of vetting they actually need to do. Uh, we are very comfortable with what DCSA does, does with the rest of the government, but with respect to the intelligence community, because it is so variable between the agencies, it's better for them to be able to, uh, to actually pick their processes. So what are, which agencies don't use NBIS and DCSA's CV program? Which are the agencies that do not? We have a, a within, 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 uh, within C, the CV particular? Continuous yes. vetting is done by everyone. Right. It's just done differently. We have a continuous evaluation system that we use within the intelligence community, but it uses many of the same uh, reports and, and uh, data sources that the CB does, is uses for DCSA. So there's commonalities there. It is just a different system that we run. David, do you want to? Uh, yes, thanks. I just add from the DCSA perspective, we're managing enrollment and alert resolution for 3.8 million Department of Defense, military, civilian, and national industrial security program contractors, but also for 44 non-DOD federal agencies. So it's a, it's a very large population that we're handling outside the IC. So is not having a sort of a single or at least a, as a baseline, a single NBIS-like system for the federal government, doesn't that hamper efforts at reform and, and oversight because we're in essence dealing with all these silo type systems and, and our, our answer actually would be no sir because trusted workforce 2.0 is bringing in the standardization and the guidelines so that even though we're using different investigative processes the underlying principles behind them are the same and what will happen with a clearance the the types of security clearances that are being granted the types of of vetting that's being done is similar across the board. When it comes to the IC, we just require more than some of the other government agencies, and so we're handling that more section. So it's really the baseline and foundation is similar. It's just the extra parts are different for what our community needs. Okay. Thank, you, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And let me